Hello, my name is Aubrey Vanderborn and I am an interdisciplinary artist working and living out of Guelph, Ontario. I'm in my studio right now in the ward of Guelph, if you're familiar with the city. Um, it's an industrial building kind of tucked away uh, from the rest of the world, which is kind of fun to create in. I'm a graduate of the University of Guelph with a Bachelor of Arts in Studio Art and double minors in Art History and French Studies. Um, and I wanted to take you on a little tour of the studio and tell you a bit more about my practice today. Um, the piece that I have in show 21 is a monotype lithograph and ink on paper. Um, my art is very interdisciplinary. I work in all sorts of mediums and I'm always interested in trying new mediums and mixing mediums and breaking boundaries or pushing boundaries of what I think a medium is. Um, but primarily, if I were to label it, um, I work in painting, printmaking, drawing, and I dabble in media art over the past couple of years. Um, I've been working a lot with video art and projections um, and live visuals. So that's a bit about the medium. Um, printmaking really does have my heart. I think I'm in the, the print shop area of my studio right now. and. The process of printmaking is so interesting to me and, and it has it's so rich with history um, and there's so many opportunities to kind of push um, what I think about printmaking and what others think about printmaking and um, my art as a whole is kind of interested in that in-between space, the sort of ephemeral um, interactions that you have with, specifically I look at shadows um, and how we interact with shadows on our walks and how you interact with a shadow because you were there at a very specific moment in time. The light was refracting or reflecting or bouncing off of something that is there because either humans put it there or because you blocked it or something in, in your pathway had blocked it and so then it's creating this imagery that we know as the shadow of something real, something in real time. Um, and that weird sort of in between this like real thing that's not actually real um, is what I'm interested in, what I focus on. And so taking those shapes um, and sort of twisting them and, and manipulating them and, and playing with it with real light, with um, projected light that I create or um, taking snapshots of those shadows that I interact with on walks and, you know, photoshopping it or rendering it by hand which then makes it a little bit more wonky um, or rendering it by hand by memory not looking at the photo at all um, to kind of depict this moment in time um, and doing that while blending mediums um, using printmaking as an example um, taking monotype and, and lithograph for example which are two different types of, of printmaking two very different types of printmaking still under the same umbrella of printmaking um, and then mixing in some drawing with it as well which kind of bends it even further the press that i have behind me is a 20 year old praga press um, and it's an intaglio press which means that uh, you can print anything under the umbrella of intaglio prints on it so etchings dry points um, aqua tints, um, and you can also print monotypes on this. Um, so the difference being that it has a very thin, you can print thin plates in it. Um, you can also print litho plates as opposed to a litho stone. The, the first layer of without a touch is a monotype. That's the process of the watercolor painting and printing one. There's a couple of different layers. I had collaged in some other monotypes that were printed on a lighter Japanese paper, which is like a thinner paper that creates some really nice um, textures and, and translucency. Um, so I had done some white litho prints on top of the mono print, and then on top of that, I had done a, an ink on paper drawing uh, that I then sewed onto the monotype litho print. Um, so multiple different layers, which is pretty common in my artwork. I um, often joke that I don't know where to stop, but I think I'm also just interested in how many layers can you put on something before it becomes um, beca before it becomes too much. I think why I'm really interested in the layers in works is because it's it creates this memory in your your painting or your drawing or your print or whatever you're making 
Um, even with my projection art, there's a bunch of different layers um, and often is, is created in sort of an installation based um, experience. Um, and I think that the, the layers of the works, it speaks to a certain type of process um, which I find really important and it speaks to interactions and happenstance movements that are then obstructed and created and informed by other works that by other moves that you're making. So each move informs the next and without the prior move, the piece as it is at the end wouldn't be the piece that it is. Um, and I think the more that you do that, the more the piece changes, the more sometimes frustrations that you'll have, um, but the more surprises you can make and the more um, interesting boundaries you can push um, and challenges that you can face as an artist um, and things that you might not have done with just a couple of layers um, come out when you have 30 or 40 or 50 layers um, or more sometimes. In my work, I like to play with different materials to print and draw and paint on. Um, so I've been playing, recently I've been playing with more translucent materials such as mylar um, or acetone um, to use that as both a medium to draw or paint or print on as well as a medium to reflect light in installations. So I often will um, draw on these materials and then install them in a way where I can project a video through them and create this immersive um, experience for the viewer. So I hope you enjoyed this little tour of my studio, the print shop area of my studio, of uh, hearing about more about my work and about the piece in show 21. And um, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Please feel free to reach out. Thanks so much and thank you to Cambridge Art Galleries for the opportunity.